For many Americans, driving past an Orthodox church involves some mystery. Most have never stepped inside and have never seen the iconostasis. Many have never attended a church service with incense or seen an infant baptized by immersion. But these mysteries aside, most wouldn't know that there's two main types of Orthodox churches in America. On the one side are the Eastern Orthodox, like the Greek Orthodox churches, Antiochian Orthodox, Bulgarian Orthodox, and Russian Orthodox. But there's also a group called Oriental Orthodox, which includes the Coptic Orthodox and Armenian Orthodox churches, among others. The difference between Eastern and Oriental Orthodox is a bit of a question in itself, with some in Eastern Orthodoxy denying that the Oriental Orthodox are Orthodox at all, and others communing Oriental Orthodox visitors to their Eastern Orthodox churches. But in this video, that distinction is not the focus. I've discussed that in another video on my channel. Rather, let's look at what's happening in America to these Oriental Orthodox churches. In 2022, the data came out from the 2020 U.S. Religion Census. Alongside that census was the 2020 Census of U.S. Orthodox Churches, which provided detailed statistics on the state of both Eastern and Oriental Orthodox Churches in the United States. For Eastern Orthodoxy, the news wasn't great. Over the decade, there was a 17% decline in adherence, including 22% decline in the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese, which lost over 100,000 adherents in that time frame. However, things couldn't be more different for the Oriental Orthodox Churches. In 10 years, the growth was an astounding 67%, from 294,000 adherents in 2010 to 491,000 in 2020. Alexei Krindich, the national coordinator of the census, provided several reports on these statistics. One thing he pointed out was how Oriental Orthodoxy is rapidly approaching the size of Eastern Orthodoxy in the U.S. He wrote, In 2010, the followers of various Eastern Orthodox churches constituted nearly three quarters, 73% of all American Orthodox church adherents. Ten years later, their share has diminished to 58%. In contrast, the percentage of Oriental Orthodox among all American Orthodox church adherents has increased from 27% to 42%. The number of parishes also increased from 623 in 2010 to 895 in 2020, up 44%. Eastern Orthodox also increased their parishes despite the decline in adherence. Krindich says, notably in the Oriental Orthodox churches, the increase in adherence, 67%, clearly outpaced the increase in parishes, 44%. What this fact suggests is that the gains in Oriental Orthodox church membership were not only thanks to opening new parishes, but also because their existing existing congregations were attracting more new members and continued to grow. In contrast, the Eastern Orthodox churches have grown somewhat in parishes but declined significantly in adherence. In other words, even opening new congregations was insufficient to counterbalance the losses in membership suffered by already existing parishes. One of these Oriental Orthodox churches is the Coptic Orthodox Church, which comes from Egypt but now has adherents across the world. And in the U.S., it stretches from California to New Jersey to Minnesota. The Minneapolis Star Tribune published the headline, Growing Coptic Christian Churches Find a Home in Minnesota, in which they said that hundreds of congregants fill the pews for services at two area churches to recite prayers, sing hymns, and listen to the gospel in alternating blend of English, Arabic, and Coptic the language of ancient Egyptians. At the time, in 2017, the numbers were 270 Coptic Orthodox families in the Minneapolis area, with 10 new families added each year, and the second Coptic church had just been planted. In New Jersey, where the Coptic Orthodox Church first made inroads into America, St. George and St. Shenouda Coptic Orthodox Church in Jersey City was holding four Sunday services in two buildings to accommodate 1,200 people. It was estimated around 15,000 Egyptian Copts lived in the city. Now, they are in the middle of constructing a new $15 million building to keep up with their growth. In 2018, the Coptic Orthodox Pope came to America and visited 25 churches, including 13 in New Jersey. Father Anthony Messa told his story in The Atlantic, how that in 2010, he looked at the names of people who had been baptized in his church since 2001 and noted that 22 out of 30 had left. He thought something was wrong with that, and the article says, Americans, even those baptized into the faith, could feel like outsiders, not only at St. Mark's, but at churches across the country. Recent waves of immigration from Egypt had intensified the influence of Egyptian culture across American congregations. Mesa would soon become an early advocate for a new kind of Coptic church, one that could appeal to American converts but maintain the core tenets of the nearly 2,000-year-old faith. By 2012, he decided to establish his own congregation. His services, with their chanted prayers, elaborate robes, and cymbal playing, looked traditionally Coptic Orthodox. But the English language liturgy, 
crowded rows of ethnically diverse worshipers, and evangelical style of preaching feel rooted in the United States. This new church is St. Timothy and St. Athanasius Coptic Orthodox Church, branded as STSA Church. Their website says of their mission, STSA's mission is to bring an ancient faith to a modern world by presenting eternal truths in a manner relevant to modern culture, celebrating all services entirely in English, engaging in and serving the local community, emphasizing the importance of evangelism. The church's new building, built on a $2 million lot in Arlington, Virginia, is finishing up. On June 9, 2023, the church announced on Facebook, Sanctuary progress. Pews are in place, curtains are installed, altar is in, and the first set of icons are installed. This church is one that has led to the growth of the Oriental Orthodox faith in America. They say of their influence, We serve 430 active members, but also minister to over 11,200 followers around the world through our online sermons, Sunday school curriculums, education courses, Courses and services. Not all of Oriental Orthodoxy can share in the jubilance of great increases, however. The Armenian Apostolic Church's Catholicoset of Sicilia did see an increase from 34,130 adherents in 2010 to 35,565 in 2020, but it fell from 37 to 32 parishes, and the growth seems to come from a limited portion of the parishes, while most are seeing decline. Stepan Poligian, board member of the National Association for Armenian Studies and Research, wrote in the Armenian Weekly the article, Can Our Church Attract the Emerging Generation? As we age and remain active in the Armenian community, it becomes an increasing source of concern. Who will replace us? Our vibrancy as a church requires a generational baton passing that is a gradual but necessary transition. I feel it is important when discussing topics such as this that we find a balance between optimism and pragmatism. No one should be suggesting the impending doom of our spiritual institution, but some of the trends are alarming. Within the church, we are caught in the dichotomy of maintaining tradition and remaining relevant. Is it possible for both to exist in an ethnic church steeped in tradition, operating in a world where the assimilation battle is constant? The facts on the ground somewhat suggest immediate attention. But all in all, the data for Oriental Orthodoxy is good news. Of the nine groups included in the survey, only the Armenian Catholicoset of Sicilia does not have a parish added after 2010. Meanwhile, nearly half of the Ethiopian Orthodox parishes in the U.S. are new since 2010. 43% of the Coptic Church's parishes are that new, and 36% of the Eritrean Orthodox Church's parishes. As for adherents, the survey in 2010 didn't get the numbers of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church or Kananaya churches, so there's nothing to compare the 2020 numbers to, but the numbers overall are very positive. The Coptic Church added over 85,000 adherents, and the Eritrean Orthodox Church skyrocketed by 227%. One reason for the growth of these churches is their embrace of immigrant communities. Many of the Oriental Orthodox churches still have a strong connection to the culture and language of the places they hail from. Ethiopia is the number two African country that immigrants to the USA originate, and this has been a boon to the Ethiopian Orthodox churches in America. In 2011, there were around 150,000 people in the U.S. who were born in Ethiopia, and in 2020, there were 292,000 Ethiopian people in the United States. The U.S. is also the most common destination for Ethiopian emigrants. This has led to thriving Ethiopian Orthodox congregations like this cathedral in Las Vegas. Notably, a scroll through their Facebook page shows that they communicate primarily in the Amharic language. This is a bit of a hint to the growth of their churches. When people immigrate to America, they like to find a community that shares in their heritage, cultural, linguistic, and also religious heritage. Look at a map of German immigration and a map of the Lutheran population in the U.S., for example. But as time goes on, the first-generation immigrants will have children that very well may end up learning English as their first language, and eventually there will be some who don't learn Amharic at all. The Eastern Orthodox churches are learning this lesson as the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese is seeing large declines now that the grandchildren and great-grandchildren of Greek immigrants no longer feel a strong connection to the church that their ancestors held dear. For the Oriental Orthodox, their strongest immigration to the U.S. is happening decades later than the Eastern Orthodox adherence immigration was. The Rockefeller Foundation Aspen Institute Diaspora Program tracked 15 diaspora communities in the United States, and Ethiopia was the most recently settled group, with 60% of immigrants in the U.S. as of 2014 having arrived since 2000. So with their great leaps forward and the benefit of the data in this information age, the Oriental Orthodox churches can learn lessons and possibly avoid the pitfalls of some of the Eastern Orthodox churches. For now, they can celebrate their strong surge into the American Christian scene, and if this story repeats for one or two more decades, 
we'll see Oriental Orthodox adherents overtake the Eastern Orthodox in the United States.